I'm so glad you're here. This week I'm making something off of my project idea list that's been growing on my phone for I don't even know how long. And it didn't take me very long to scroll through the list and find one that sounded like fun and was most definitely added at 4 a.m. at some point. It says, giant stress relief manta ray. Why not? <laughs> it didn't take me very long to remember where this idea had come from, although I was a little confused at first, which is often the case when I read through my notes again. But I remember I had been on Instagram a while back and I saw this very talented crocheter had made a big dragon that you could hold and he had a neck that like went up to your head and you could give him a little hug. And he was, he was very cute and very sweet. And I immediately wanted something like that, just not exactly that. I wanted something that covers both shoulders and your chest and maybe Maybe it's weighted. That's like a stress relief animal. But to cover this much area, you'd have to have wings. So instead of thinking of something that has wings like a bird, my brain thought of manta ray first. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm not like a big ocean person. I'm afraid of the ocean. I'm afraid to swim in the ocean. The idea of being on a boat on the ocean freaks me out. Just in general, everything living in it. The fact that we know the surface of the moon better than we know the ocean floor freaks me out. But I do like watching nature documentaries and I watch them before bed. And now that I'm saying all of this out loud, that's definitely where I got the idea. Mystery solved, gang. Doobie, doobie, doo. So I added giant stress relief manta ray to my project idea list, thinking I wouldn't get to it for a while, if at all, but I'd written down the idea and knew it was there for when I was ready. And now I'm ready. So I added it to my plans for the month. Then the idea evolved again. While I'm working on a project, I like to have shows, movies, and podcasts running in the background so that I have something to listen to and partially watch. And recently I've been catching up on one of my favorite shows, Dimension 20, Fantasy High. It's junior year and I'm loving and every bit of it so far. It's on Dropout TV, which is like, I think my only subscription I have uh, to anything. And the only reason I have a Dropout TV subscription is because of Dimension 20, because I love D&D. While I was catching up on Dimension 20 Fantasy High junior year, I don't want to say anything that spoils anything necessarily, but I'll just very vaguely say I was reminded of a creature called the Night Yorb. The Night Yorb is a creature of night and darkness, and it's also a giant manta ray. We're making the Night York. I know this is a very specific reference, um, but also Giant Stress Relief Manta Ray is also a very specific kind of project. Everything just kind of lined up perfectly. Also, I have to talk about it. I don't know how well I've communicated this, but um, I try to dress according to the theme of whatever I'm making. Like when I made this, which you can see the video for on my Instagram, I dressed in purple while I was making it. Yeah, I, uh, I love a theme and I will run as far with it as fast and hard as I can and often get carried away with it. And um, I was so excited about making something inspired by Dimension 20's Fantasy High that I almost went full speed ahead into making cosplay-ish outfits of the characters just to wear in the video. And then I caught myself, I reeled myself back in and just decided to meet myself in the middle and settle on just making myself a couple t-shirts shirts that have to do with the show. Just for me and just for this because I can't not go with a the theme of something. So the first one I made is this one. It's inspired by Basrar's Soda Fountain which is where the characters go for ice cream and I've had this sweatshirt which was either thrifted or a hand-me-down. I've had it in my stash for a long time waiting to be decorated and I thought the color scheme lent itself very well to a an ice cream shop type theme. And I happen to have the perfect color vinyl on hand already to make it, so I made it happen and it's now one of my favorite sweatshirts I've ever made for myself. And I also get to wear it with my little ice cream cone earrings which I made a few years back, so I just, I'm, I'm very happy. The goal today is to make the pattern and cut out the pieces. That's it. I don't think this project should take too long, so I'm changing it up a little and going easy on myself as far as the workload is concerned and spacing things out. But before we get to patterning, let's take a look at what this big little guy should look like. Overall, he's shaped like a manta ray and he's bluish purple on the top with red eyes, a very long tail, and uh, lumps? Spots? One of those.
I thought I'd do this a little differently. I don't usually talk while I'm doing things. Um, I'm always afraid that it's going to mess something up. My attention is divided, so I'm gonna mess it up somehow. Uh, but this is just cutting out a very simple shape, so I thought I'd talk while I'm cutting out the pieces. Like I said in the beginning, I love D&D, but I haven't always. Uh... I only started playing in 2020 when my family um, was playing a campaign uh, DM'd by my brother and it was so much fun and I was surprised at how quickly I picked up the general idea of how to play. Where's the tail? Wait, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Look at our boy! He's gonna be so big! Before 2020 and before we started playing, um, I really didn't know anything about how to play the game. I knew there was a book involved and you had to follow the book and any game that involves following a book that intensely and involves math, I thought I'm not smart enough to play this game. I am not very good at math. And I didn't really know anybody who played the game. So I didn't really have anyone to kind of introduce me to that world. Or for that person to also say, hey, you are smart enough. You don't have to be smart to play this game. Just try it out. Until we started playing as a family and then I just wanted to play all the time. <laughs> My first character, <laughs> oh shoot, <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. Okay, well, that's okay. She was a halfling rogue who was fiercely loyal and because she was a rogue, she was also very mischievous. I, she was just so much fun to play as. We haven't played it in a really long time and I miss playing it a lot. <laughs> So watching shows like Dimension 20 and listening to shows like Tales from the Stinky Dragon is the closest thing I can get to right now to playing. So there's a very choppy little story time. Uh, choppy, choppy, get it? to break up the monotony of having a montage in all of my videos and that being basically it. Well, darn it, that doesn't match up at all. It's okay, I'll make it work. Oh, you look so cool. So, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Ah, look it. Here is the top of the night orb so far. It doesn't quite uh, match up here because I didn't measure it to match it up. <laughs> But that's uh, very easily solved with a few more cuts. So I'm just gonna whoop. So I'm going to very scientifically uh, trim away the excess. Whoop, just like that. Okay, we are professionals. We are professionals. And now, because I just willy-nilly cut the uh, bottom of it, um, I might just use this as the template for the belly fabric, which hopefully I have enough of because... Ugh, come on! This was a... Oh, no. Oh, okay. Okay, we're good. This was a remnant I found at Joann's, and it's black velvet with silver... Sparkles. I almost said sprinkles. We are not at the Sarars right now. They are silver sparkles, and it reminds me of nighttime, which I think is perfect for the night orb. Hopefully we have enough. If he has to have a seam on his belly to make it work, I'm okay with that. Let's see if we have enough. Oh my gosh, okay, it looks like we're gonna have just enough to do the belly. He is gonna have to have a seam, but that's okay because his belly is going to look like a night sky full of stars. So, I am happy with that. Okie dokie, all of the pieces are cut out and I'm so excited. <laughs> what are you doing? Hi. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna stop there for tonight and leave all of the sewing for tomorrow while I, my love, I cannot do this right now. <gasps> you give me that! So I'm going to call it a night on the night orb. I'm gonna call it a night Yorb. Oh, brother! And I'll get to the sewing, stuffing, and weighing tomorrow. So, I'll see you then. Hello! It's the next day. All we have to do today is put our big weird baby together and figure out how to make him weighted. I have sort of an idea of how I would want to do this, but I'm not entirely sure. This is the other shirt I made inspired by the show, Fig and the Sig Figs. Uh, that's the character Figs band, and I love it. I love how it turned out. The only problem is it smells so bad. 
goodness gracious. This t-shirt unfortunately isn't thrifted and the t-shirt itself doesn't smell. I mean, it smells like craft store. So I guess it's kind of a smell all on its own. But the thing that smells is the iron-on that I used, which is thrifted. And it's, I think, from either the late 90s or the early 2000s. And I don't know if it's just old and smells bad or if it's that it contains some toxic chemicals that I've been inhaling since yesterday. I don't know which one it is, but it smells so bad. <laughs> And I'm hoping that with some wear that it'll fade away and get aired out. I don't, I'm really hoping here because I really like this shirt and I want to wear it a lot, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to wear it that much if it doesn't stop smelling so bad. None of the vinyl that I've ever used has smelled this strongly before. Yeah, I, but I love how it turned out. Cut it up a little bit. I, I did the design in about an hour. I don't know, maybe less than an hour. Just kind of doodly and fun, messy. There's Fig's horns. She's a tiefling, so there's horns. Uh, there's a band-aid, because I think in the official art she has a band-aid on her knee. There's a little dice. And there's her skateboard for when she needs to skateboard away under one of her many aliases. I don't know if you can read it, but on the back it has some of their song titles so so yeah I just really like how the shirt came out. Anyway, we're gonna get back on track here. I need to sew the nut yorp together, stuff it, and see how I can make it weighted. My plan right now is once it's sewn together, leaving one end open, sewing a tube around the outside of the creature and possibly adding another one toward the center so that it's not just weighted on the outside, it's also on the inside. Taking those tubes, filling those with rice, and I just want to clarify, I really don't like wasting food. It really bothers me and I try not to contribute too much to food waste. So using rice sometimes feels a little questionable, but the rice that I've used in the past was gotten into by some moths. We just this random problem with moths in our pantry. We'd never had it before. We don't know where they came from. We don't know, like it just, it happened very suddenly and very rapidly and they got into so, so much. They chew holes through plastic bags and they they nest in whatever is in those plastic bags. So their silk gets over everything. So we had these bags of rice that were just filled with moth silk. And so we obviously couldn't eat that anymore. So that's what I've used to make weighted things in the past. So I might reuse that so that I don't have to use any new edible rice to make this happen. I'm over clarifying, I know. I, but I, I felt like I had to add that in because I just don't want anybody to think that I'm using new edible rice because this rice was rendered inedible for really gross reasons. I'm gonna stop over explaining myself and just get to sewing. the major sewing has been done. It's been filled with rice, <laughs> which was a mess. So now it's all down to the details. The, uh, the night yorb in the screen grab I got from the show has red eyes and it has these, they look like either spots or lumps on the back of it. And I'm debating debating whether or not I paint those on or keep it uh, plain purple. I'm a little concerned about painting it after I've just filled it with rice because if the paint seeps through and it wets the rice, that that's not good. That'll be a mess. But it would add fun detail to the back. Maybe I'll make the spots out of felt and just hot glue them onto the back. Um, I did want it to be soft and plushy, but it is very plain on the back and I think adding spots of some kind, whatever I make them out of, will make it look better. I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet, but for now I'm going to give him some red eyes.
everything is complete. He is sewn together, he is stuffed, he is weighted, he is painted. So let's take a closer look at my uh, emotional support night yours. be a giant monster wishing for eternal darkness, but he gives awfully great hugs. Going into this week, I didn't think I was going to be making an emotional support manta ray that would turn into a monster called the Night Yorb, but I have no regrets. He is heavy, but it feels so nice. Um, <laughs> I love that I had enough of this sparkly velvet to do the belly. However, it does leave glitter everywhere. I added his little red eyeballs, which when they are filled with rice, just kind of go on both shoulders. His little flappy wing things can go both on your shoulders and on your arms because I made him so massive. I am glad that I painted on the details instead of doing felt. I think it looks better. I had just the right kinds of paints, which they have a little bit of a sparkle to them and they all glow in the dark. Very faintly, but they do. Which is awesome to me because I'm a sucker for things that glow in the dark. If you can make something glow in the dark and it thematically fits whatever you're making, why wouldn't you make it glow in the dark? Ooh. And his tail is very long. <laughs> I wish I'd made his tail shorter, but uh, the reference photo I have of the Night Yorb does have a pretty long tail, so um, yeah. <laughs> his little red eyes with the contrasting blue-purple color to me are giving Man Ray from Spongebob. <laughs> Which, when I realized, made me very happy and it made me laugh. And his wingspan. <laughs> he has a huge wingspan. This is his belly. So shiny and sparkly and very much not like the night sky. This! <laughs> So this project was a definite win. I love him. Very little went wrong. Everything kind of worked out like it did in my brain, which is rare to say the least. I love him. And if you liked it too, you can let me know by hitting the like button. And if you want to see what I'm doing next and follow along with all of the other projects I'll be doing this year, hit the subscribe button. And if you don't want to miss a post, hit the notification bell and YouTube will let you know. So I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye!